Hello, Silver Wolves. I'm Blackie, and welcome back to the channel. Okay, it's been a while since we've done a Silver Wolf, so we're going to talk about that today. And what we're going to talk about is trip hazard in camp. This is real important for us old Silver Wolves because, one, we're not as nimble as we used to be. We're also to the point that we don't see as well as we used to, and then once we get off balance, we don't correct as well as we used to. And so therefore, falling down, breaking a hip, or getting some other mechanical injury can be a bad thing. Now, earlier in the Silver Wolves series, I talked about how to fall down, how to roll down, how to get back up, and things like that. So I'm not going to cover that in this one. But what I'm going to talk about is one of the most basic problems that I run into in me, myself, and other friends of mine out in a camp, when you're, especially when you're not alone. And that's these trip hazards. Now what I've done is I have simply run up a ridge line right quick and I throw the poncho up here to represent a tarp. But what we're going to talk about is when we pull out our guy lines, okay? Now there's several different ways to do it and one of my favorite ways to do it is this. This is a tent stake that I've anchored and I've got like 12 feet or so of the small bank line on it. This is more than strong enough for use for a uh, tarp to fly a tarp and on the end up here I've tried tied a big bowling knot that way I can go through the grommet through this and pull it out okay now that makes for a quick easy setup so I can come up here grab the eye and we're going to show this up close in a second so just hang with me squeeze that down to its narrow go through the eye of the tarp open it up pass the entire tent stake through it like that and then we're just going to roll it let it roll in our hand out here to where we want and we're going to stake it down the problem with it is you can't even see that now can you you can't see that guy line it disappears now i like it like this because it's quick and easy but they're just about invisible and so if you're somebody, especially when I'm around other people, and they don't know, and they come walking up to my camp, and it's normally, oh, I'm sorry, you okay, Blackie? Oh, I'm sorry. And they run into them because they're not used to them, and they don't see them because of that thin little bitty black line going down there, and they bump into it. So you need to set up something a little bit better so you don't get that, uh oh, running into it. Especially since we're going to be getting up during the night. We got to run to take care of nature's business and we're coming back and forth Now let me show you a way that you can still use this little bitty line and Safely do it. Now. Let me show you that right quick. Okay Right here is my guy line going to my tent stake right there. You can't even see that can you? We're going to be cleaning out up underneath the tarp anyway, aren't we? So what we're going to do is we're going to kick up the leaves directly underneath your guy line, like this. I'm going to take and clean out the leaves out from under my tarp, and where do I put them? I put them right here at the corner of my tarp, and then I also put them directly underneath that guy line. So I've got a visual reference right there, a pile of leaves. And let you see that a little bit clearer. So now you can see this. Here, right here, is the tent stake at my foot. Now, if I clean this out to have a walking path to let me get up underneath my tarp to my shelter, my whatever, I've got a clear path right here to follow in and out. Put the pine straw, the leaves on two sides. Make like a walkway to go in and out of. That way you can see it. Also, even though I cannot see this line, this pile right here, especially if I make sure it's cleared up on both sides, so it's just obviously a wall of leaves right there, I will know not to walk into it. And also, people walking up to me should notice that and not run into that. So we're going to clean out from under our shelter. Get the leaves out of whatever. Or, if we're doing a ground pounder, 
pile the leaves up to make a bed. And then where our guy lines are, we put that wall of leaves underneath it. So it's a visual reference. And clean a pre-made in and out path. That way when you get up in the middle of the night and you gotta answer nature's call, you just follow the path. You don't need a whole lot of light for that. I don't have to worry about what my guy lines are because that path is gonna take me clear and gonna bring me back in. See, just use the path. Now, another thing that just may work better from some of you is you may wanna use a nice bright, some kind of ridge line, uh, ridge line and some kind of uh, guy line. Now, this is a green ridge line right here. Notice how you can't see that ridge line but you can see whenever I take this and put it up there. Technical difficulties. One moment. There. But if this was an orange ridge line, you can see it. See? And for those of us that eyes aren't as good as they once were, this may be the way to go. Now, as you know, in my uh, cordage series I have talked about, I make up my ridge lines in a certain funky color. You know, a blue, a yellow, a orange, a red, something like that. So that when I pull that out of my um, um, haversack, I know exactly what it is. That's a ridge line made up. And ridge line should stay with the tarps. See, I have my long line. That's what this is right now. I have my long line in my cordage kit for me just pull out and have a long line. And I'm improvising a ridge line with it right now because this is just a poncho. I haven't set this up as a shelter set. I've set it up as a poncho. But I want to be able to turn it into a shelter easy and I carry cordage for that. But having a bright that you can see against the background makes a difference especially with our old eyes because the number one number two trip hazard that we run into is a we run into the ridge line because we got it set up this high and we turn around we go straight into it or we trip over the guy lines of our shelters which can be a bad mechanical injury and, but it, to me, even some of the times that ridge line is even worse because when we turn and go, because we're not thinking, and that sucker hits you at eye level, it hits you in the nose, hits you in the mouth, it can chip a tooth, it can hook, hook you in the nose, it can scratch an eye, all the above. Bad things. It can knock your glasses off and damage your glasses. We need to be able to see it. So, if you're an old silver wolf like me that doesn't have the best eyesight anymore, Having a high-vis ridge line, high-vis guy lines can be an, a, a big asset to help us prevent mechanical injury of us tripping, falling down. Cleaning out underneath our shelter if it's a hammock or if we got a cot under here, whatever, where it's actually a, a much bigger tarp, creating a pre-made path in and out to follow piling up a wall of leaves along the guidelines so even the night when we got that little bit of light and we're going out to answer nature's call we can see the boundaries and reduce the opportunity to break something old murphy is always on every camping trip with us and so you know old murphy is going to find a way murphy's law to make us trip up so let's do everything we can to stay healthy and safe while we're out here we're out here for us for the enjoyment. We're out here with the grandkids. We're out with whatever to enjoy our silver wolf years. We don't want to break an arm, break a leg. M medical cost, we heal a lot slower than we used to. And something like a shattered knee, a twisted up ankle, a broken hip can cause real trouble in the backcountry. So we want to avoid that. And one of the number one things I see people do tripping on them guy lines. When I've done my own gathering and have it, and I would be using these dark things, I had to pile leaves up because people would come walking up to come see Black Eater's tent and walk right into a guy line. I'd watch my tent go, boom. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, you okay? You know, 
And there's nothing with them, it's just they don't see it, because it, it is, it's very hard to see, even when you know there's supposed to be one. By putting that wall of leaves down there, right there, you can tell that this is the tent stake, and here is my guy line, right here that you can't even see, you know. But it's running. right there see how that high vis stands out that might be a way to go silver wolves we've we got a lot left to do we got a lot of sharing with the family and the friends we're not done yet and it is our job to pass on as much of the information that we've learned over the, our lifetime of fishing hunting camping to share it with the grandkids, with the kids. Maybe you and your kids never got a lot of opportunity because you were working a full-time job trying to fight and big companies and mortgages and car payments and everything else, and you just didn't have the time. And now you're retired, you got the time. We have to do everything we can do to stay healthy, stay active, and stay out here in the woods as long as we can. And let's not let a dumb piece of cordage ruin an otherwise wonderful experience. Till next time guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day guys.